Dr. Peter Glidden, your steadfast advocate for health, as reported earlier and frequently, stupid is as stupid does. And if you are not completely ticked off by the unnecessary face masks, social distancing, and economic lockdowns, you are not paying attention. These things are not supported by the scientific data, and who is supporting these notions? Conventional medicine. It's the Centers for Disease Control. It's Dr. Fauci at all. It's not the chiropractors that are promoting this. It's not certainly not the naturopathic doctors or the homeopathic doctors or anybody else. Oh, why is that? Well, it's because we haven't had a free medical market for 108 years. The pharmaceutical industry runs everything. The Food and Drug Administration is in charge of medicine. The only thing in the United States that can treat a disease is a drug. You've got to be kidding me. It's a monopoly inside of which absolute power has corrupted absolutely. So even when they fail us big time, as they have done for the last three months, wrong data, wrong conclusions, making us frightened for no reason whatsoever, shutting down the economy for no reason whatsoever, certainly not backed by science. We give them a pass. Oh, that's okay. They did their best. No, well, if this is their best, then we need another team because they're striking out. They're striking out. They're striking out. It's the bottom of the ninth inning now. Are you going to keep these guys in? Yeah, it's time to bring in the second string, for goodness sakes. The vaccine police are coming next, ladies and gentlemen. It's only a matter of time, and you need to educate yourself about this, and I have your back. Let's take a look at the numbers. Do you like the numbers? These numbers from the Center for Disease Control. Are those numbers good for you? U.S. flu vaccine effectiveness data for 2018 to 2019. These are the numbers for the effectiveness for the influenza vaccine for H1N1 in the 2018 to 2019 flu season. The Centers for Disease Control in that flu season tracked 10,000 people. Of those 10,000, 1,325 tested positive for the flu. And of those 1,325 that tested positive for the flu, 42% had been vaccinated. 42% <laughs> of the people who got the flu had been vaccinated for the flu. Well, that's not very good. 7,249 people tested negative for the flu. And of the people who tested negative for the flu, 56% were vaccinated. Now, do you see the problem with a statistical analysis of this nature? There's no way of telling if the people who tested negative for the flu were exposed to the flu. There's no way of telling that. What they should have done is just rely on the data from the people who got the flu. Of the people who got the flu, how many were vaccinated? In order for the vaccine to be really effective, it should be like zero or one, right? But this is how they crunch the numbers because, well, there's lies, there's damn lies, and there's statistics. So when you put these data sets together, you come up with a total effectiveness of the influenza vaccine, for this season anyway, against H1N1, of 44%. 44% effectiveness. Now, 16% effective for people who are over 65. And as you may have noticed, the people... Uh, now who are being killed by coronavirus are not kids. They're not teenagers. They're not in their 20s or their 30s or their 40s or their 50s. They're elderly people, people with pre-existing health conditions, the vast majority pre-existing health conditions, people who were not that great to begin with, and then they got hammered by the coronavirus. Well, as it turns out, this is the way that it is for most influenza viruses. 16% effectiveness for the vaccine for the elderly 
for the influenza vaccine for 2018 to 2019, a 16% effectiveness ratio. Does that make you feel warm and fuzzy? So with data like these, are we, are we really excited about waiting for the coronavirus vaccine? Well, as a member of the general public, if you're over 65, you should not be excited about this at all. The only people who are excited about it are people who have stock in pharmaceutical companies who are manufacturing the vaccines like, ooh, let me think, wait a minute, Bill Gates. Those are the people that are getting excited about this because from a purely academic point of view, vaccine effectiveness, pharmaceutical vaccination for influenza isn't that great. Numbers don't lie. Well, but oh, Dr. Glidden, we got to do something. And you know, 16% is better than 0%, and it's certainly better than dying. 44% is better than 0%, and it's certainly better than being sick for four weeks and missing four weeks of work. Oh, yeah, well, how much work have we missed now because of the coronavirus shutdown? You lost your damn job completely. But that's another subject. Well, you know, in a perfect world, we would have a free medical market. But we don't live in a perfect world, and we don't have a free medical market. And because we don't have a free medical market, because the medical market is, in fact, dominated by the pharmaceutical industry, data from non-pharmaceutical viral uh, treatment strategies are not looked at. They're not attended to, even though they are extremely effective, as were these studies conducted by Cuba. India and Brazil, government-sponsored programs administered by MDs and nurses using homeopathic vaccinations, homeopathic prophylaxis against influenza, dengue fever, and meningococcal disease. Over 90 million people on an annualized basis were treated with homeopathic medicine with an effectiveness between 75 and 95 percent across all age groups. So which is which is better, a 75 percent effectiveness or mm, a 16 percent effectiveness? Which is better, a 75 percent effectiveness or a 44 percent effectiveness? And oh, by the way, no side effects, no danger to the homeopathic prophylaxis treatment, and unbelievably inexpensive to make. The only people in the world who are not in favor of this type of intervention are medical doctors with their heads in the sand and people who are heavily invested in the pharmaceutical industry. And look, thank God for insulin. Thank God for penicillin, maybe. Thank God for general anesthesia. This is not a diatribe against pharmaceuticals. This is a diatribe against a non-free medical market. Homeopathy has been proven with over 90 million people in three different countries to be way more effective than pharmaceutical vaccination for viral infections, for tropical diseases. But it's not looked at. Why? Well, follow the money, baby. <laughs> so, I mean, come on. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. And inside of a self-policing, self-regulating uh, industry like the medical industry, the pharmaceutical industry, which enjoys more largesse from the United States government than does the military-industrial complex, you can do whatever you want and get away with it. So they told us all this nonsense about the virulence of the coronavirus and that social distancing was going to slow it down and that we need to wear face masks and we need to bankrupt the country in order to keep people from dying. And it was all incorrect. It was all incorrect. And now they're getting us ready for vaccinations, which are historically not that effective for the people who are hammered the most by viral infections, the elderly and the infirm. Meanwhile, homeopathic treatment, way more effective 
and yet they're going to tell you that homeopathy is quack medicine, it's placebo, it doesn't work. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. These people are just practicing bad medicine, bad medicine, quack medicine, quack, 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 quack. So who are you going to believe? Well, there are two types of people in the world. I've been doing this for 31 years now, and I can tell you, in the wonderful world of intelligence, it boils down to two sets of people. The sheeple people who follow whatever the mainstream tells them to, even when the mainstream proves to be wrong over and over and over and over, they just trust them. I don't know why. And everybody else who has seen through that nonsense, who understands that there is more going on here than meets the eye, and who also are open-minded enough to consider the possibility that there may be, there may in fact exist in the world, science-based, clinically verified alternatives to the pharmaceutical method in order to make people healthy. And if you are in that group, in that camp, then I'm your new best friend. Because the last half of my life is dedicated, has been dedicated, and will continue to be dedicated towards educating you in a public forum at my website, riseupintohealth.com, about these things that you can do. Science-based, clinically verified methods developed and delivered by licensed and regulated naturopathic physicians, acupuncturists, Ayurvedic physicians, homeopathic physicians, which have been proven to be effective. As my uh, second cousin, six times removed name drop, Benjamin Franklin said, unless we hang together, we most assuredly will hang alone or something like that. You get the drift. The vaccine police are coming, ladies and gentlemen. And, you know, it's the tip of the iceberg. You need to inform yourself about things that you can do to make your body healthy because they exist right now. You don't know about them. Your medical doctor doesn't know about them. Some do. Some are starting to see the light, but not nearly enough, and none of them are speaking up. So, come into the light. Frequent my website, riseupintohealth.com. We've got lots of free information there. And also, I have a month-to-month -month subscription service there, which, when you become a member, when you become a member of my online information, my online community, when you become a member, I will show you how to become the hero of your own health recovery story. Leave Big Pharma behind, ladies and gentlemen. It is the single best thing you can do in order to build your health. I am and always will be your steadfast advocate for health. Dr. Peter Glidden, live long and prosper. See you next time.